Hello everyone. So, believe it or not, this is a quite easy uh, method that I came across about a month ago, and it is uh, a gimmick card. That's all you need. I will explain how it works. Now, let me tell you the basic principle. You need to place that selection all the way at the bottom, because the gimmick card, which is this, uh, I have it all the way at the bottom, and then when I control the selection right next to it. Uh, in which there are several ways. I will explain three different methods. I want to locate the gimmick at about one third of the deck. Okay, as you can see, just a little slight gap right there. And then proceed to do the furrow shuffle. Well, it doesn't have to be a perfect furrow shuffle. You just need to place an indifferent card in between the selection and the gimmick card. Okay, right in the middle. So you don't really have to do a, a perfect furrow shuffle throughout the whole deck. Now with this method you can freeze the shuffle right at the selection, okay, right there, and then unfreeze it at any moment you want. And one of the three ways, I'm going to explain how you can place the uh, selection right below the gimme card. One way is by doing the same method that I used, just go to the video full note in case you want to do it in the same way I did it. The second way you have to partially do the spread to conceal the gimmick card. So when you keep spreading, you are spreading right over the gimmick card. Okay, as you can see, all the cards are going right above the gimmick card. So when the spectator uh, says stop, they can point at any card. Let's say this card, you show it. Seven of diamonds. The gimmick card. It's already down here. You can close the spread with a gimmick card right over the selection. The third and final method is by having the gimmick card all the way at the bottom as well. But you can just add the spectator to take any card, get it off, put it on top, and do a single cut. And that's it. The selection is already right below the gimmick card. Now, because the absence of the corner is on the bottom left side, I'm going to shuffle with my left hand. Make sure it is a precise uh, straight cut. It is imperative that when you cut, don't go over this line. It has to be uh, a perfect cut. Uh, and that's mainly because... Let me show you the principle using only three cards. The selection and the gimmick card must be right next to each other. Then. And in different card, when you shuffle, must be placed in between those two. When I shuffle using one hand, this is the grip that I used, as you notice in the performance, okay? Because my ring finger, pay attention to this, must be located about half of this half. I'm separating this, uh, this card in half. It's going to be right about here, in the middle finger right about here. So when I am uh, about to shuffle, I do pressure with a ring finger, right here. So the uh, card that is in between the selection and the gimmick card is going to get a twist. Okay, the corner is going to get interlocked right there. Because of the ring finger is applying pressure. To unfreeze the shuffle, you must apply pressure right over here with the middle finger instead. 
when you apply pressure over here, it twists this other way, uh, continuing the shuffle. If you cannot reach using one hand, because the shuffle um, is more amazing, I think, when you use one hand, because you can freeze it and not freeze it really subtle. However, if you cannot reach using one hand, then try to use both hands. Okay, the absence of the corner is right here, so I'm gonna try to twist like this. I'm exaggerating. So it freezes. Uh, it's hard for you to see from the top, but it freezes. And to unfreeze, just go this uh, opposite way. Uh, let me see if I can do it. I barely practice it with using both hands. Uh, just make sure you don't need to do a perfect floor shuffle throughout the whole deck, like I'd say. Okay, right there it freezes. Then twist this other way, and then it unfreeze the shuffle. For a same principle, I already explained. If you want, you can just go ahead and show everything is okay. The gimmick card in this case is the trio diamond, doesn't matter which one. But this is very important that if you have the selection uh, all the way at the bottom, it may not look as tricky as it may be because the slightest you pull this gimmick card towards the side, they can see this little corner right here. Uh, when I was doing the performance, uh, it may not look as difficult, but it is kind of tricky. You have to be really careful when doing this. Also, when you already have that preparation, I will explain the routine later in this video, but when you have the shuffle like this, ready to reveal the card, the middle finger notice is right here before I go to the second grip. This is the first grip, and this is the final grip to proceed to the shuffle. But if you let go the finger from here, you see the gimmick card, it moves out pretty easily. So you have to pay attention with the gimmick card. You have to be careful with the gimmick card, okay, throughout the whole setup. Let's say when you show over here, they see the audience from this angle, they don't see from here, which is a, a nice thing. Okay, I'm applying pressure with this finger, with a ring finger, because the absence of the corner is right here. To unfreeze the shuffle, apply pressure with a middle finger. There you have it. You just lock and unlock the shuffle at any moment, just with a move of the finger. And that's it, it is quite easy. And I think it looks really amazing as well. Now, the way I did it in the performance, I was doing couple cuts, just uh, little ones, okay? So the gimme card may end up about one third, okay? And for you to know how high is the, the gimme card into the deck, you can see the little gap just from your own perspective, which is even better. So when I cut in half, I can see the gimme card right about there, okay? So you can show a nice uh, shuffle throughout the deck without freezing the shuffle too fast. The second way I did it in the performance, uh, like I say, controlling the selection all the way at the bottom next to the gimmick card. Then I did the on hand shuffle, taking about 10-15 uh, cards. Um, so that selection and the gimmick card may end up at the right height. Okay, this is just an average. Then I take with the ring finger the cards at the bottom, the gimmick and the selection in the process of uh, doing the on hand shuffle and taking the cards from the top as well. Okay, so it looks a continuous motion. I think that looks quite nice and really subtle. So right there, as you can see the selection, it is, you can see the gap. It is a nice height. It doesn't have to be perfectly in half, just you can take just one third. I want to make the shuffle last as long as I can. So the more perfect this shuffle is, the longer the shuffle is going to last. I try to let go the middle finger, but you don't have to over exaggerate. Just don't apply pressure right here, just with a ring finger. Because the corner, the absence of the corner is on the left side, bottom left side. So I need to apply pressure right here. So the deck twists the right way, so it locked. Okay, right there. And you can show very quickly inside. So there is no tapes, uh, pieces, any extra pieces on the, on the gimmick card. Not for too long, because sometimes the card may get um, too 
twist. And you can see maybe a little corner right there is stuck. I'm applying pressure with a ring finger and then with a middle finger apply pressure over here so it twists this then the chocolate can keep continuing uh, quite easy so i hope you enjoy it